I mean a conversation. Not let me tell you who you need to vote for and why. Ask them what they think. Ask them what their opinions are. If they challenge you with something that you don't have a response for, it's okay to say, you know, I'd like to come back to and revisit that later after I have a chance to investigate it. Maybe look up some information. Maybe come back with better information. The, the thing here is I want, to, I want to give people something to believe in rather than a reason to vote against. I want to give them candidates, and, and candidates that, that have a, a clear vision for what the future should look like, not just, hey, we're not them. It's not good enough anymore, and it shouldn't be good enough anymore. The other aspect of the Tea Party that I think is going to have a long-lasting impact is that we are paying attention. We're not going to go cast our vote on November 7th, or November 2nd. Please don't cast your vote on November 7th. That would be a disaster. <laughs> You're not going to cast your vote on November 2nd and walk away and not pay attention anymore. I just moved from the state of Florida not too long ago. Many of you may be aware of the Marco Rubio race that's been going on down in Florida for the Senate. I love Marco Rubio. I hate Charlie Crist. I have hated Charlie Crist since he became our governor in the great state of Florida. I've had the occasion to meet Marco Ruby on many, many occasions, had the interview to have long conversations with him on my show, and at the end of every interview, and at the end of every meeting that I have with Marco Rubio, the last thing I say to him is, if you go to Washington and change, I will come after you hardest. I will come after you fastest. I will make sure that every day of your life you have to worry about the misery that is me taking you down on the radio every day of your life. My bar has been raised. We are the people that have to hold everyone to that higher standard. We can't just go back to that complacent thing, okay, I cast my vote, and then everybody stands around and goes, well, my vote doesn't matter, there's nothing I can do. Yes, there is things you can do. You can call your congressman, you can call your senators, you can email them every day. You know what? They may dismiss you as a kook, but they're going to pay attention if enough people do it. You'd be amazed at how little it takes to get somebody to pay attention. If you couch your terms in, we'd like you to do this. Here's why we'd like you to do it. This is why we believe it's good for the country. And if you don't do it, I will work tirelessly to get you thrown out of office. It will get their attention. We have to be the ones that always remain vigilant. We can't let somebody else take the, take the reins in that aspect. Another thing that I'm very happy to be associated with the Tea Party with is that as much as we've been picked on in the media, because it's never ending, I mean it's non-stop, we're racist, we're angry, we're advocating violence, we're looking for a second amendment solution, we've remained positive, we've remained happy, we've remained very tidy, I might add. Did anyone notice after Glenn Beck's rally, not a scrap of garbage on the National Mall, just saying. It gets very easy to be cowed into silence. I, I, when I got to Louisville, Kentucky, I, I am unabashedly conservative. It's who I am. My boss said, you know what, you just go on the radio and be, you, be who you are. And I started hearing from people, you know, Louisville's very, very liberal. They're not going to like that. They're very, very liberal. Well, I started doing my thing and I started talking. I started meeting people and they would say things like, oh, we're so glad you're here. We're so glad you're conservative. <laughs> the last part. And I realized something that conservatives in a lot of areas have been scared into silence by those on the left who don't want to have a discussion about the issues. So instead of having a discussion about the issues where these decisions may lead, the unintended consequences of some of the policies that are being put in place now, they just call us racist, tell us we're stupid, that we're angry, bitter gun clingers, so they can dismiss us and go about their business. The time for that is done. The time for that is over. The time now is to stand your ground. As Joe Biden says, to borrow a phrase from our vice president, gird your loins and don't back down from these conversations. You don't have to be ugly because my grandmother always said, you get more flies with sugar than you do vinegar. But you need to stand by your principles and be proud of who you are. Don't let them scare you back into silence by calling you any kind of name. Whatever ism they got for you, trust me, I have been called it. I've been called it on the internet. I've been called it on Twitter. I've been called it on blogs. And essentially, it goes away. It doesn't stick. It doesn't matter. When you know that you have the best interests of the country in your heart, when you know that you look at what's happening in Washington, D.C., and you think to yourself, this can't continue. I have a 16-month-old daughter. I look at the
the way things are going now, and I think to myself, not only is she going to have a 0% chance of, it, of accumulating any wealth through hard work and determination of her own, there's a 0% chance that any of the wealth I accumulate will be able to be given to her. I, it, it's insane what's happening. It's morally unjust. And we have to be the ones to continue to point that out. One thing I will say, I know you all heard a couple weeks ago when I guess the president was asked by Matt Lauer about the, the Tea Party movement in general. And he made a very dismissive comment about how Tea Party people are angry, but he doesn't hear any real solutions coming out of the Tea Party. We need to be advocating all the time for a balanced budget. How do you do that? We may have to be the ones that stand up and say, you know what, we need to start increasing the age on Medicare if that's going to save the program. We need to start cutting, we need to start cutting spending, including defense spending, if we're going to balance the budget. We need to have realistic solutions to difficult problems, even if they are politically unpopular. And the people that are making these difficult decisions, we need to support them with phone calls, with letters, and campaign donations. We need to be supporting the right people, and the wrong people should be ready to go home. That's the way we should do it. Now, uh, don't get me started on John Yarmouth. That's a whole other show. Uh, I, I love to see people out here. I love to see all of your faces out here. It warms my heart and makes me very happy. But I want you to do one thing before you leave. You look at all the other faces at this event. You look at the people sitting next to you. And as a matter of fact, uh, in a few minutes after I get done, start introducing yourself to each other if you don't know it, because you all share the same ideology, and you all, you're all part of the same team, even if you don't recognize it yet. This November 2nd is going to be so much about who shows up at the polls. There's this enthusiasm gap. I'm sure you've heard it. The Democrats, down in the dumps, you know why? A lot of people very dis disenchanted with the way government is going right now. You know what that feels like. You know what disenchantment feels like. So why don't we all make it our mission to take at least two other people that may have trouble getting to the polls to the polls. Let's talk to people the night before and say, hey, you're going to go vote. Oh, by the way, these are all people who agree with you. Don't talk to the other people. I'm not going to lie. A strategy is a strategy. I'm not an idiot here, OK? I've long advocated that there should be some kind of test before people can vote, because I don't think stupid people should be allowed to vote either. We need to take action, not talk, when it comes to getting people to the polls this November 2nd, more than ever before. If you know older folks that have trouble, call them. Make arrangements. Help your candidates that need your help make phone calls before the election. Get out there and support the people that share your values. Stop accepting what is being sold to you by people who don't. These are very important tasks. They're very important things. They don't require that much effort. You've made the effort to come out here and sit in what might be rain in just a minute. You're halfway there. Take your passion, take your love for your country, and translate it into what really matters at this point, and that is a change at the polls. I loved when the Tea Party was a non-political movement. I loved it when it was people coming together because they were upset about everything. Now's the time, though, that that text enough already slogan it can either be a slogan or it can be a shift in the paradigm that is politics in America. You know, slogan or paradigm shift, it's up to us. You have to decide. I very much appreciate you guys having me today. I very much appreciate everyone standing up to this weather and coming out. And please, 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 be active, stay active, pay attention. Don't stop doing what you're doing, even if you get frustrated, even if it gets exhausting. Because it's too important, not just for us, but for the next generation and the next generation, and quite frankly, the rest of the world. Because if we go down, the rest of the world goes right down with us. I believe in American exceptionalism. I believe that we're the shining light on the hill, and I want us to stay that way. And it's incredibly difficult to maintain the moral high ground when you borrowed the money to build the high ground from China. Thank you very much for your time. Everybody stay dry and enjoy the rest of the day.